Hello, welcome to uh, this edition of Rising, uh, Rising Ideas Pod with ANI. Uh, my name is Dhruva Jayashankar. I'm ORF America's Executive Director, and I'm here with Elmedin Konakovic, who is the uh, Foreign Minister of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, he's here for the Rising Dialogue as a speaker, uh, and it's a great pleasure uh, for to have him here joining us uh, for a quick conversation on the sidelines. Um, minister, I understand, is this your first visit to India as a uh, minister? And Actually, this is my first visit to India in my life, yeah. and as a minister, of course. And how have you found it so far? What has been on your agenda uh, for this visit? First of all, I'm enjoying really this beautiful country, and, and it is a little bit different than, I, uh, than, than Europe and the rest of the world. But uh, um, this is really also a great event. Uh, Raisina Dialogue uh, is a great opportunity to discuss uh, geopolitical movements in the world, but also there are many ministers of foreign affairs from Europe. And I'm using also the opportunity to meet many of them because right now top priority for my country is EU integration and uh, we are sharing some information regarding our European future. So it's a really great event. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here and I'm enjoying beautiful India. I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about the EU uh, accession talks. Uh, what is the current status? I understand you've become a candidate country and what does that, what does that signify? Uh, top priority in foreign policy of Bosnia and Herzegovina is EU integration. We started 20 and something years ago. Uh, we are a little bit frustrated because this really goes really, really slow because of strict rules inside of the European Union, but also on the other side because of many mistakes um, they were done by our authorities in past governments. So right now we have so-called momentum, unfortunately because of aggression on Ukraine, uh, European Union, uh, woke up somehow and they realized that because of security in the first place story um, about enlargement of EU is again is live again. So we have a new opportunity. We need to uh, deliver. We have these famous 14 key priorities. We need to align and to deliver from EU right and from EU side. And the uh, so-called momentum is happening right now in my country. They granted candidate status to my country in 2022, but also last year in December, they decided to open negotiations co conditionally with Bosnia-Herzegovina, and we are waiting for new report and new council meeting, which will happen at the end of March this year. And we hope to, to, to get positive decision and to officially start negotiations about full membership with the with, uh, European Union. Uh, you have the EU elections coming up this year. Um, with that and other developments in the region, what is the time frame you're looking at for uh, conclude? What, what would you hope to? Uh, how long do you think it would? You hope yeah. it would take to conclude uh, the talks. The most important thing, as I said, is is a decision to start officially negotiations. It can be completely controlled whole process because there is a question like, is this a shortcut for our country or not? And because other country, they didn't have uh, shortcuts like Croatia, which actually yes. had strict rules and everything to fulfill and they, they did their job. So we don't ask for any shortcuts. We ask just political decision to start officially negotiations. And then through screening process and every chapter, they can control movements or, or um, the, 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 actually the readiness of Bosnia and Herzegovina to become a full member. So um, there are many bad examples, but also good examples. We have few countries waiting for too long. We have Western Balkans countries negotiating for too long, uh, really slowly opening chapters and, 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 and uh, uh, solving chapters. So we hope that now because of, like I said, momentum, we will start and then it's on us actually to deal with the reform. There is also a big opportunity for us to integrate ourselves into European single market, which is the most important part of this integration process. So we hope it will not last for too long because Bosnia Herzegovina has a big problem with the brain drain. People from Bosnia Herzegovina are going to Germany, to Austria, to European Union countries. And for us, it's really a big problem. We can keep them. If we have some economical development, it is the easiest and the fastest way is with EU integration. Mm -hmm. One other f uh, final question on the Balkans. Um, you know, this has been an area that has taken longer for EU integration to take place, the Western Balkans in particular. Um, there was recently, although we've had peace for, for some time, there was recently a bit of a flare up between Serbia and Kosovo. Uh, how, how, how does that impact? How do you see it from Sarajevo? Uh, it's really important for us. Relations between Serbia and Kosovo are actually really important because of stability of whole region. 
And as you said, we, 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 this is really for too long. The Thessaloniki summit was held 21, 22 years ago. And from then, actually, European Union announced that they will integrate Balkans, uh, Western Balkans countries into EU. And only Croatia actually became a member and all other countries are still waiting and negotiating. Um, a really important fact for my country is because uh, Russia, they had a lot of influence in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, Serbia. Uh, so Russia is not so happy with these movements and the progress in the, in the sense of European integration. And then it's, it is strange to explain why, because our export, actually 93% of our export goes to European Union and candidate status country. Mm -hmm. 0 0.8 yearly goes to Russia and China together, but influence from Russia is so strong and it cannot be compared with the economical but the political influence is really, really big and so strong. So relations between Serbia and Kosovo, relations in Montenegro, actually, mm -hmm. with some pro-Russian um, parties and politicians, and of course, uh, Russian influence in Bosnia and Herzegovina is, is a really, really important issue regarding stability and security. Today, I'm in India negotiating European future, and my a uh, partner from my coalition, state coalition, Milara Dodik, he, he visit, he, today he visits uh, Moscow and he have pictures with Putin. He talked to Lukashenko two days ago. So can you imagine how complicated it is in, in, in this small country with the European actually uh, integration as a top priority? So mm -hmm. Serbia and Kosovo is really important, but also stability of the whole region. How ha have you and your government looked at the Gaza situation? Uh, is you know what wh what is your position uh, there as that unfolds? It's not easy for us to see the same pictures. Actually, uh, we had a, a war in Bosnia and Herzegovina thirty years ago. Um, we suffered. I'm Bosniak. I'm Muslim. You know, we suffered a genocide thirty years ago in the UN protected zone. So we have all rights to be vocal and loud, to say our message to the rest of the world. And it's not really not easy to see the pictures from Gaza uh, where Israelis are killing kids, civilians, attacking on churches, schools, hospitals, and, and, and it's, it's really painful for us. Also, on the other side, we condemn the Hamas attack because mm -hmm. there is no any alibi you cannot explain uh, and you cannot have any reason to shoot civilians or mm -hmm. to to take civilians hostages that is actually, that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we think of course, and, and we pray that, that peace will come as soon as possible. They will sit and negotiate and, 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 and to try to talk, to solve some problems, two state solution is the only way as, as my country actually, that, that's a position of my country is two state solution. And maybe Bosnia Herzegovina can be really a good example how things can be done because we are today, we are having coalition with the people who are still denying genocide, celebrating war crimes. You have a federation. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 don't, we, we have different views on our history. It's really painful, but because of the future of my country, we are aware of the, of the importance of the progress of my country. So we are sitting, we are negotiating, we are creating dialogue and we are finding solutions. So till now we delivered European laws. We are, we are moving on Europe, European path, even with painful history we had only 30 years back. I was a soldier during the war i was defending my country and i have today i have to talk with those people i was fighting with you know just two two decades back so it's not easy but that is the only um positive way to have our country with the bright future uh, two other final questions. Uh, one, uh, we, one issue that has been discussed quite a lot of the Rise in a Dialogue is uh, UN reform or lack thereof, uh, lack of progress. Uh, what is your country's view on, on uh, the necessity of UN reform? Uh, especially in the light of last happenings, these wars, Ukrainian and, 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 and Gaza happenings, like I think you, UN really needs reforms. So we support the idea like you countries promoting that, that uh, India as a uh, uh, as the biggest, uh, popula biggest population in the world can, can have a permanent seat in the United Nations Council. So there is also a time to, to reform some other parts of the world. We are supporting that idea. And of course, we are a small country with not so big influence, but we, we, will, we, will, we will say what we think about the reforms in the, in the coming months. Uh, lastly, I wanted to get your uh, uh, views on uh, basketball. You're a former basketball player. The F NBA had its first games in India f a few years ago uh, for the first time, although it doesn't have as much of a fan following. What is your favorite basketball team? 
Uh, I loved Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. Actually, yes. when it was 15, 20 years ago, yeah. actually that was that was uh, my team. It was a Tony Kukoc Two, playing Tony for Kukoc, that team. Yeah, yeah uh, Tony yeah. Kukoc, European, the ex Yugoslavia, actually yeah. um, national team member. So I was I was in love with that mm. team. So mm. now I prefer to watch some individuals. Yeah. I like these European guys. Actually, they brought a lot of energy and a lot of intelligence. In this game, I prefer Euroleague. I, mm -hmm. I'm watching every Euroleague game probably because of the time zones, maybe. Okay. Because I need to sleep. And usually when they play some good games in NBA, I'm sleeping, taking some rest. But this is, I'm, I'm, I'm bas basketball is my life. I love okay. basketball. I, I'm, I'm like, now when I have time, I go to Belgrade or to some other close city to see Euroleague games. And I'm enjoying individuals in NBA. But I don't have the, 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 the preferred team right now at the moment. I just love basketball. Well, next time you come to India, we should introduce you to cricket as well, uh, which is the uh, I don't know, sport, I don't know the so much about sport cricket, here. But I can imagine when, when it's so popular, probably it's good. Yes. Okay. Thank you again for taking the Thank time to join us. Thank you very much. Us.